Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers, and it is officially game week. The Saints took the day off Tuesday. Coaches hit the game planning for Kansas City, and everyone was back at practice on Wednesday. Back out there today, um, got some more situational work, two minute, um, you know, down two at the end of the end of the game. And, you know, I thought we executed good offensively. Uh, a little bogus call by Riz on the um, illegal substitution, but but listen, you never know what's going to happen in the game. We've had a few bad calls around here at times. So, Not only did the situational work end in three made field goals, a lot of the targets were tight ends, with Jimmy Graham getting the most looks he's had all camp. Well, yeah, I think part of it is, is, is getting him ramped up, you know, uh, and play all, all last season. And, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, you kind of got to get your legs back into, into football shape. Um, which I think he's getting back to that spot. And so, um, look, we've said this before, you know, you don't have to see it every day out of, out of some of these veteran guys, but uh, at some point we got to see it. And so it's nice to see, um, you know, him show up today and, and uh, uh, hopefully that'll continue. As we look ahead to the game Sunday, I'm bringing in former Saints offensive lineman John Stinchcomb. Stinch played eight years for the Saints after being selected in the second round of the 2003 NFL Draft, and he was a member of the Super Bowl championship team. He'll be on the call for the first two Saints preseason games, starting with Kansas City Sunday at noon on Fox 8. John, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to working with you again during these preseason games. And we have the first one coming up on Sunday. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, I'm glad we finally got rid of Jonathan Vilma. He was the anchor that was sinking us, bringing us down from the bid. Now, I'll miss him, but I certainly look forward to uh, preseason and getting the season underway. What is it that excites you about just the new football season starting? Well, hope springs eternal, right? For every team, you you start off with the highest of aspirations and you're working with that goal in mind. And some teams, that's realistic and others, you know, it's a pipe dream and they just don't know it yet. And I think the Saints are figuring out uh, if they're one of those teams that has that realistic shot of making that deep run into the playoffs and, you know, a chance at the Super Bowl. And you know, from from my seat, they've got some key pieces that uh, they need to be able to turn to that need to step up or stay healthy or whatever the case may be. And they very well could be one of those teams that has a legitimate cha- claim. Yeah, I've heard the Super Bowl thrown around a couple times in training camp. But of course, you got to put the work in. People have to stay healthy. Things have to kind of fall in your favor in some of those regards. What do you remember about training camp and your time playing for the Saints? Oh, each one was hot and brutal and <laughs> took years off my life, Aaron, is what I remember. Uh, but especially that 2009 season, um, you know, you, you had a feel, as, especially towards the end of that preseason uh, training camp time, that we had a lot of good pieces. And, you know, you have to play good ball. You have to focus on each week being its own animal and not looking too far ahead. But you also get a feel for, you know, I kind of like what we've got. We've got uh, you know, enough ingredients to make something really special here. And let's be honest, there were other seasons where you felt that way, and it certainly didn't turn out that way at the end of the year. But uh, you have to at least start and have an idea of, of what you're capable of. The Saints added to their offense with acquiring Derek Carr. He's come in. He's been here every chance that he has is really trying to get to know not only the playbook, the style of play here, what the saints expect, but all of the players, how important do you think that that is? I think it's vital. I think you look at the successful teams and sure they have talented players, but what they have uh, that it sets them apart is chemistry. They work well with one another. It's almost a, as if they're one body and, and they're all on the same page you know, you can have a couple you know, somewhat loose cannons, but it's got to be a pretty much cohesive unit. And, and that's what you see in these 
ultra successful, highly talented teams is what sets them apart is chemistry. And, you know, if you look at a team that's coming off seven wins, they didn't do a lot of roster overhaul, right? There is a couple key pieces that they add. Derek Carr being the central piece in this offseason that they say, this is what we're missing. We're missing a guy that uh, can come in and, and be that feature uh, player in the most vital position in sports, and that's the quarterback spot. And it's not just ability. It's not just, you know, can he make the throws? It's how can he get the entire team and specifically the offense on the same page and create synergy where, you know, we're playing better as a whole than we are the individual parts. Speaking of adjusting, getting on the same page, for an offensive lineman, former offensive lineman, how hard is it to adjust to a new quarterback? I, I don't think it was anything that you ever had to do. Yeah, well, it, only when uh, Drew came to town. And that I wasn't a starter before then. But, you know, it, when that was the year where Coach Payton and post-Katrina, so literally everything changed. But, you know, it, you get to know a guy's personality, how he runs the huddle. Obviously, the cadence is a little different. Uh, the the play selection, what he does well, what we do as a group well, changes with uh, a different uh, captain of the ship, if you will. And when Carr is in, you've got to learn how he wants to do things, how the mechanism of getting in and out of the huddle is, and and his leadership style when things aren't going well. Um, you know, is somebody else going to be vocal? Is he the vocal guy? I think we've seen from his Raider days that there's opportunities where he will certainly take advantage of, uh, of, of barking up guys' trees. But uh, just learning those little aspects and, and trying to get on the same page, it's important. And that's why, you know, I, with a one less preseason game, um, you have to do that in a hurry. And uh, you see this offseason where – uh, Derek brought guys out and they're working together. It's because because of that last CBA and the new restrictions mm-hmm. and um, a, it was in, in an effort to increase player safety and uh, comfort, if you will. But you have to have some some of your own gumption and your own volition put in the work to build that chemistry. And I think we've seen that. With that being said, having one less preseason game, we don't often see a lot of the starters playing in them, but the Saints will have two joint practices. How important are those practices going to be for the Saints to really figure out where they're at, what they need to work on ahead of the season? Yeah, I think those have actually replaced what we saw in preseason a decade ago. A decade ago, it was first game, one quarter, second game, two quarters, third game, you're playing into the second half. And then the fourth game was, you know, we're we're going to heal up and get ready for the season. That had gone away. That was a dinosaur. Only a few teams were playing some of those guys. And I think one of the main reasons is because of these joint practices. You get such good work leading up to the game uh, in, in dialed in sp- specific situations that you can control that you get to a better evaluation of where you're at and what you can do once you get to week one, which is the whole point of the preseason. So um, to the fans detriment uh, because of these joint practices, I think it has certainly devalued what coaches and, and talent evaluators need uh, because of the joint practices. They've almost replaced what you get from preseason games. Head coach Dennis Allen said that we will see the starters this Sunday against Kansas City. What would you like to see from the first team reps in that game? Yeah, this is an opportunity to kind of build confidence. You you compete against a different opponent. Um, You don't expect a lot of time, but let's see where we need to polish, right? You're not going to be able to make some huge overhaul. You have a good idea of, of who you are at this point. I know you're saying we haven't even played one preseason game, but all off season. You've mm-hmm. looked at what you did well last year. You've brought in different pieces. You understand what they do well. Now let's see it in a controlled environment as much as possible. And for a short period of time, can we get in and out of the huddle? Can we execute on the, you know, it's just gonna, isn't going to be designed to beat Kansas City. It's going to be designed to, can we execute on what the New Orleans Saints want to do? Both sides of the ball. 
Um, and that's what you want to see, especially early on with your, you know, your ones that when they're out there, don't expect them to be out there a ton, but when they are, can they run the offense? Can they execute the, the defensive calls at a high level? Let's see it. Let's be able to make some corrections and get them off the field. And then we'll be able to, you know, refine as we go out to LA next week. With it being the first game preseason, how simple do you think the playbook is going to be, you know, just to kind of, as you said, gain some confidence and, and keep things easier and, and not trying to do anything too crazy to start the season off? Yeah, if history is any gauge, they don't have the entire full uh, playbook already installed. So if you're looking for goal line offense, you're probably not going to see it. Uh, it's a matter of the the fundamentals, the base, uh, first and second down, the regular formations, your sub package. That's installed now. And so let's see that. Let's go out there and 85% of the playbook that's already installed, let's make sure we've got that hammered in and everyone's on the same page so that we can put those last couple pieces in place uh, during next week of training camp. So uh, for preseason game, number one, it's not going to be flashy. There's not going to be a lot of pre-snap motions and various sub packages and folks playing different positions. It's let's execute what we need, and then we can add some of the dressing later on the road. I was talking to new defensive tackle Colin Saunders earlier today at practice, and he came in from Kansas City, and I asked him what he is expecting from Sunday's game, and he said, oh, I'm sure they'll go right at me, first play of the game. They're going to have something for me. Is that something that is talked about, or is that something that's just among the players being like, oh, we're going to go get Colin on this to start the game, or is that something coach says? How does that play out? You know, I think it might be just as much in the player's mind as it is an actuality. You know, you always <laughs> feel like. But I will say, you know, when we played the Cleveland Browns uh, after Scott Fujita left us and mm -hmm. we went over there, we had a couple ways to uh, say hello, if you will. So I think there is some truth to it. And I think players also try to build it up in their minds. I don't know if it actually comes to fruition quite as much as we might think it would. Well, going back to the Saints offensive line, there have been a couple injuries already in camp, players moving in and out of different positions. How hard is that for an offensive lineman, not only maybe to move from left tackle to, to left guard, but then to go complete opposite to the right side? Well, I, I think for, if you're not a starter, the expectation is you could do more than one thing. If, you know, if you're an interior player, I need you to be able to play both guards and hopefully take some center snaps. It, get, it just adds value. Um, and then, you know, the the more you work yourself into a starting role, then you can really focus on one position. I think it adds value overall. And especially if you look at the Saints offensive line over these past few years, even dating back to Teron Armstead when he was a tackle, uh, especially with Andrus Pete, it – it has never been the same starting five. It's actually been one of the consistents of uh, the Saints the past few years is the offensive line has been a little bit rotational. And, mm -hmm. um, it, it you know, it is what it is. And so I think it helps you when you've got guys that can step in in multiple positions. I think that's why Throckmorton was such a, a value add when he was an undrafted free agent. You say, Golly, here's a guy who can play a number of different positions. I think it's what uh, has allowed Hurst to develop into the player that he is as a seasoned vet who showed that he's capable as a starter at left tackle, one of the premier positions in sports, uh, but also one of, one of his greatest attributes is his flexibility. Uh, not only can he play tackle, but is now vying, if it's not a tackle spot, can can he be one of the starting five at guard? And so – uh, it's not an easy transition for some guys, and some take to it more naturally. I think if you look for the average fan, if you're an interior player, things happen a lot quicker, and it's a lot more power-based. And then if you're on the edge, you've got a lot more space to deal with and, and some, you know, a variety package of uh, individuals you're going to see, some that are a lot smaller and a lot quicker, and you also have to be able to move guys off the spot that are that are big and heavy. So the variety of what you see on the edges is a little bit different, uh, but both have their own 
you know, pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses as you compare the two. Mm -hmm. Hurst has definitely been working out a lot at that left guard position. Left tackle seems to be Trevor Penning's spot here. Missed a lot of last season, missed off season. So what are realistic expectations for him in that role this season? Well, it's unfortunate. If, if you saw anything of Penning coming out of college, you knew that he's got a high ceiling, right? Very physical, one of the most uh, physically dominant films that you could watch of a guy leaving college, but probably didn't have the polish that some others had. And then part of that's the program that he's coming from. So what could have been his greatest asset? A year to learn, a year to get more reps, and under Coach Marone's leadership of just technique, uh, injuries kind of stole that from him. And guess what? We don't have more time to give you another year until the team needs you to be able to step in. And I think that's where we're at right now. And he's going to have to, you know, it's baptism by fire. He's going to be out there and and the fans are going to watch his growth process happen before their eyes. And, you know, sometimes that's difficult for a guy because three years from now, Trevor Penning is not going to be the same player that he will be in week one of the 2023 season. Mm Mm-hmm. Fans don't really care. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I want you to perform at a high level from day one as soon as we need you. And the team needs him. And that's where we're at right now. So I think a realistic expectation for him is, you know, he's going to have uh, some rough plays. I would think primarily in the in pass game where, you know, it, that's not quite his comfort zone yet. He certainly has all the the – strengths and characteristics to make him be more than capable now and certainly more so down the road, but to have the confidence in in the technique that it takes uh, to face some of these outside linebackers and edge rushers in the NFL on a week in and week out basis, uh, there's going to be some growing pains along the way. Sure. Somebody that you're very familiar with now with the Saints on the coaching side, the offensive line assistant coach, Daria Evans, how cool is it to see him in that role? Oh, I love it. Uh, ja was, uh, you know, he would, would did the, what was it, minority, former minority player internship last mm-hmm. uh, training camp. So we got to go to dinner and it was with Zach Streif, who's moved on. We don't talk about that guy anymore, but <laughs> Jari is back. And, you know, what a great uh, asset for the team and specifically for these players, a guy that, uh, who came in and Aaron, I can attest his technique was atrocious. And I think he would tell you that. So for him to develop uh, the skills and technique to match his natural God-given ability is, is the reason why, you know, he is in discussion for being in the NFL hall of fame one day, uh, put together a tremendous career but the player he was from day one to when he retired umpteen years later was much different. And I think he can speak uh, in a way that players will listen to a little bit different just because of that platform. And having played next to him, his, uh, his approach to the game, his mental aspect and positive attitude is infectious. And it is a huge asset for, for our team, for the Saints to, to go out there and have someone that's been there, done that, played at the highest level, uh, improved technique wise, be able to speak the game in a language that they can relate to. And, you know, it's just a great dude. So huge ad for the Saints. And I'm so happy for him. I was talking to rookie guard Nick Saldaveri, and he said that he's really learned a lot and was just gushing about having Jari around. So definitely is translating everything that you said seems like it is happening. When you look at the entire team, what would you say at this point are or is the strength of the team and then maybe an area of concern? Because we don't have any weaknesses. No, never, never weaknesses. Uh, you know, what's funny is I, I work with offensive linemen as they get ready for the NFL. And it's included in that is interviews with coaches. And you say, you know, we speak that same language. Here are my strengths and here are the areas that I'm working on because mm-hmm. you, know, you don't want to tell anybody here's where we're weak, right? Um, I, I, let, let's start on the defensive side of the ball. I think you're returning some really high caliber 
great leadership guys that you know, we, we need the complementary pieces around them to stay healthy. Um, you look at the core, just internal of this defense, and there is such great leadership, great uh, high-end caliber players. Let's complement the fact that the Saints have kept and now locked in for a total of a decade and a half, uh, old Cam. And you know what? Not only is he a great leader, but continues to be such a productive player. Um, somebody that, that you look to as to how you approach the game. And that's at almost every level. We've got someone with those characteristics. Obviously, obviously DeMario, Teron, all those guys fall into that category. And now you're adding pieces, younger players, like Werner, who, you know, certainly when he was healthy, was a huge contributor. And so your strengths are you've got some nice pieces in place that play at a really high level. What was the downside of it was injuries. You've got to keep them on the field as much as possible. And, you know, throughout the season, it was it did not look like the same defense that you thought it would be because it was not the same defense. You didn't have the guys out there. So uh, can Peyton Turner step up? Can he be that guy? That's that's an area that you need uh, as you lose guys like Anyamata and bring in you know a couple of vets from other teams, but obviously spend a high draft pick on Brisey. Can those guys figure out what roles complement each other best at a, at a pace in which – you know, you don't have time to wait. You can't wait to the second quarter of the season for that to happen. Flip to the other side. Obviously, you know, this is a roster that on paper has a lot of playmakers. Uh, you, you look at guys that you can get the ball to and you feel really good about it. You feel good about uh, bringing in a quarterback that's found success and played at a Pro Bowl level. And can those guys complement each other quick enough? Can you get them on the same page quick enough that um, you build momentum as the season goes. And obviously up front, you know, some area of concerns is we don't know who that five starting five is going to be. And you know, it most likely is going to include a first year starter in pinning that did not have the, the rookie season that we would have wanted because of injuries for him to kind of develop and create those techniques that he feels confident in. So, there are, there are reasons to be really excited, and then there are some uh, causes for concern that you just need to make sure that we monitor mm -hmm. as best we can and strengthen as, as fortify as you go along. You mentioned all the weapons on the offensive side. How about Jimmy Graham signing back with the Saints? Oh, I love it. That was my favorite. So it was like, I didn't know if you're bringing him back as a coach. It turns yep. out he's a player. <laughs> No kidding. I mean, the yeah. guy, he's uh, hes a legend. So what a great asset. It'll be interesting uh, to see how exactly uh, we can use him because for all Saints fans, we had those years where you just throw the ball up and Jimmy's coming down with it and uh, continues to be six, seven, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, that huge target. So uh, what what can we utilize him in, in the red zone and those type spaces? And can we create those opportunities? And can we use him to create opportunities for, for the rest of the assets that you have on offense? I'm excited for him. He's a great – he's another one of those great guys that you want to be around the program. And from everything I, I've seen and heard, he seems to be still very capable athletically uh, so it, it's a, an exciting ad for all of Houdet Nation. He is most definitely still six seven. He's so tall. He got a lot of targets today at practice. Coach Allen was talking about how he needs to get his legs back in football shape because he was doing the whole bike riding thing for a while. So I think he just slimmed down. Oh. So he um, <laughs> still mowing people over though out there. So it's going to be really exciting to see how he's used. You have two preseason games that you're doing this year. Why do you like coming back and doing the games, working with the Saints? Well, it's a biased broadcast. Let me start <laughs> with the truth, Aaron, right? So it's not like I'm going around comment, uh, comment, uh, offering color for two teams that I don't care about. I mean, I am, I am, uh, I'm a Houdat for life. So the fact that I get to speak on a team that I love and for a fan base that is as loyal and as passionate as Saints fans are – uh, I look forward to it every year, and it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of the organization in this small way, um, and it's fun. You're talking football about a team that you like, so 
it's a it's a great time of year for me and i'm sure i'm not alone in, in feeling that way hey we're talking football when joel lets us right that's exactly right. But he's got great stories, Aaron. He's been around a long time and I'll let you know about it. So I look yes. forward to hearing some of them. Well, I look forward to seeing you. Joel Myers, of course, will be on the call with us as well this weekend. John, thank you so much for the time. Aaron, always a pleasure. Can't wait to uh, see you in person. Really appreciate John taking the time to join me on the podcast today. Look forward to the game this upcoming weekend, working with him and Joel Myers. Now, with the season approaching, don't forget the Saints kickoff run will happen September 9th. Fans will go through the city, finish on the 50-yard line of the Caesar Superdome. You can check out all of the details at saints5k.com. You can register for the event there. It all takes place that Saturday before the Saints season opener against the Tennessee Titans. So it's a fun way to kick off the season and get a chance to run out on the field yourself. So don't forget to sign up there. Thank you so much for listening today. I'll be back with a preview of Kansas City on Friday. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.